Hello and welcome to this video. So today we're going to go over our leverage vertical scaling system that we're utilizing to help our restaurant partners grow. Um, and basically what I'm going to show you is one, how it works, two, who it's worked for, and three, the procedure behind it, and then four, what you can go ahead to do to implement this for your own restaurant today. So that being said, I don't want to waste your time. I want to just provide as much value as possible um, and show you, you know, what I'm talking about actually works um, and, you know, for you to get as much value from this as possible in the shortest amount of time. So that being said, I'm going to jump right into it. Let me just move this camera over here. Uh, best believe that I am speaking to you. I'm going to be looking in this direction just because I've got the monitor over here that um, on the screen that you're looking at. So just so I can see that I'm going to be looking here, but you know, you're still in this conversation with me today. Um, but yeah, that being said, let's jump right into it. So the leverage vertical scaling system. Now, if you've seen us before, you might have heard about the system before. You might have seen our clients' results. Um, you might have seen some of our client testimonials. But basically, um, what I'm going to do is run you through the procedure and give you concept on, I mean, give you an understanding on why it works, how it works, um, and what you can do to make it work for your restaurant. So the leverage vertical scaling system. Before I show you this process, you need to understand what it actually means, right? So there's two different types of scalings, um, not in the world, but there's two types of scaling that are uh, different to each other, um, which is the opposite of vertical scaling, which is horizontal scaling. So what horizontal scaling is, is the growth of a business or restaurant by opening up more location, more locations by franchising or opening up more or, or new businesses or new branches, right? So for example, if you think of a horizontal plane, which is land, if you have a, if you have a house over here, horizontal scaling is by opening up more houses this way or opening up more restaurants this way, right? So horizontally and vertical scaling is the growth of a business or a restaurant by maximizing its revenue output through maximizing the revenue channels, which means basically increasing the uh, amount that each restaurant is generating to increase revenue by maximizing maximizing its revenue channels, okay? Now, this terminology is actually derived from the computing world, which is why I'm mentioning this, because if you haven't heard about it, don't think you're a bad restaurant owner or that you don't know restaurant lingo, because this isn't actually in the restaurant lingo. This is more on the software stack and, com uh, and computing um, computing business that a lot of uh, entrepreneurs and investors are now utilizing to um, uh, incorporate within local businesses like restaurants, brick and mortar businesses like gyms, et cetera, et cetera. So just to show you in the computing world what it actually means, Vertical scaling is increasing the power that each, uh, increasing the processing power of each computer. So uh, taking it from, you know, a, a computer that's producing quote unquote three X power to something that's, uh, that's something that's producing 30 outputs of power. Whereas uh, horizontal scaling is keeping the same size computer, but just opening up more. Right. So that's basically what I mean by when you open up more locations, which is horizontal scaling and vertical scaling is by increasing the processing power or the revenue output of that location. So what are the differences now? Horizontal scaling in some situations is very much needed, right? It allows you to sustain more traffic and it allows you to open up a new location. So if you're based in London, you might want to open in Birmingham. If you're based in Scotland, you might want to be, uh, open in London. So those are certain things that, you know, you wouldn't be able to, you wouldn't be able to maximize your revenue uh, from a London audience if you're based in Scotland, right? You'll have to open up a restaurant in London. So there are certain things that horizontal scaling that provides um, and every you know big chain does that because they need to open up more locations but more importantly they need to open up more traffic which means that you know if you're at ATC the restaurant and you're and you're full every single day during all your hours um, and all your ADC are actually um, are actually full then you know you will need to scale horizontally um, but if you're not full all the time and you have a lot more room to grow then vertical scaling is going to be your specific target okay so horizontal scaling um, allows you to sustain more traffic and open in new locations, but the cons of that, it's much more expensive. There's high upfront costs. Yeah, you have to choose a location that actually is going to drive you revenue. So you have to pay good rent for that. Um, you're going to have increased overheads and management. And it's just basically going to be something where if your current restaurant isn't performing as well as you'd like, you're just going to have double the problems, double the overheads and double the costs with a new location. And so the reason the vertical scaling exists is because if you're not in a position, um, I mean, if you are in a position where, you know, uh, breakfast, lunch, dinner, or if you're even lunch dinner, you have two trade times. So you could do, you could turn your covers about twice during those two trade times or three times, depending on, you know, what type of restaurant you are. If you're a fool to the brim, then, you know, this, this video isn't necessarily for you because, um, this is talking about specifically vertical scaling. I don't want to waste your time, but if you still want to, you know, learn more about what I'm talking about, you can stick around. But if you aren't at a position where, 
you know, your restaurant is currently full to the brim where you can't get more people through the door because you just can't sustain it, then you need to carry on watching this because what I'm going to show you is what we're focused on, focusing on with this leverage vertical scaling system. Okay. So what are the pros of vertical scaling? Well, the pros of vertical scaling is that you utilize the same venue. So there's no new venue opening. You utilize the same stuff. So there's no increased of overheads. You increase your profit margins because your, your, your revenue is going up, but your cost is not incrementally, um, or your, your marginal revenue, well, your revenue is going up, but it's not going up um, in proportion to marginal cost, right? So your cost isn't going up as you produce more output, which is the key point of vertical scaling. Right. So you increase profit margins, you maximize your customer opportunities, because if you have more revenue channels, there are more customers that can reach you. So, for example, I'll give you a small example, which I'm not going to touch on here. But let's just say you only sit down a new revenue channel you can open up is online ordering. Now you're going to attract a whole new different market to you for people who want to eat at home, for people who don't want to you know, necessarily sit in your restaurant. And that's vertical scaling. You're implementing just a new system without increasing your staff, increasing your chefs. Your venue is just producing more revenue output, right? So that's an example of vertical scaling, but that's not what I'm going to touch on today. So um, that's obviously you maximize your revenue channels. Uh, so you maximize customer opportunity, you maximize your revenue channels, you maximize your revenue, of course, but more importantly, it reinforces flow for the restaurant by not being stuck with one revenue source and makes uh, and makes horizontal scaling much easier in the future. So a lot of restaurants that I see, for example, if they're just a sit down restaurant, and this is pre COVID, at least because a lot of restaurants, I believe now have a online ordering system. And, you know, in our restaurants, we also inputted an online ordering system uh, during COVID because that's kind of like when we needed to adapt. Um, but, um, but yeah, I mean, if you're, so for example, where it says, you know, reinforces flow of revenue and not being stuck, if you were in COVID and you didn't have an online ordering system, then, and you were limited just sit down restaurants when you weren't allowed to eat at sit down restaurants when no one was going out, you can imagine, I mean, I could imagine what type of situation you were in where you were relying on one single revenue source per location. And so with vertical scaling, if you increase the verticals at which a customer can reach you because of the um, revenue channels that you're maximizing, then you are going to one, make more revenue. But more importantly, if one of those revenue channels falls down, let's just say, I don't know, the UK government says no more online ordering from tomorrow because, um, you know, from uh, from tomorrow because of health and safety reasons. I don't know. We all know this health and, <laughs> health and safety stuff. Um, oh, there's my, there goes my light. Okay, we're back. Um, so if, the, if that does happen, then obviously you're going to be in a situation or you're going to be in a pickle. And so the whole point is that with vertical scaling, it allows you to have increased uh, channels to get more revenue through your doors so that if one falls, then you're not limited to the other. Uh, if one falls, then um, at least you have more revenue being generated through different channels. So. Now, the cons of this is obviously the law of dimin diminishing returns, where you get less output per input at scale, but that's not necessarily a bad problem to have. And if you're not having a bad, if that's not a problem you're facing right now, you don't need to worry about that. Um, because obviously law of re diminishing returns just means when you maximize your output. And if you haven't maximized your output, then you don't really need to worry about that. Another key thing about vertical scaling is that it makes horizontal scaling in the future much easier. Because if you can take one location, let's just say you're sitting at 50 to 100 to 150,000 pounds a month, let's call it 100,000 pounds for easy math. If you're sitting at, let's just say 50,000 pounds a month, because um, I feel like if you're watching this, you're probably around that level between 50 to 150 a month. If you're sitting at 150 a month and you want to, and you feel like you can't maximize more people just sitting in your restaurant, like bums and seats, and you open up another location, then, you know, you get that to, that's also at 50K. So now you have two locations doing 100K a month, but let's just say you're able to vertically scale the current one that's doing 50K a month, and you're able to get that to 80K. Let's just say you get to get that to 80K, which is extremely possible. A lot of restaurants do much more than that, but then that means that you can take that same system and then duplicate it. So two restaurants that were generating you uh, you know, a hundred with the double overheads and everything like that is now generating you 160. And maybe if you open up a bigger location, you can vertically scale even more. And so it makes vertical scaling a lot easier because you have more capital to finance the um, upfront cost of opening up a new location, right? You know this, you're a restaurant owner. So yeah, and this is the same solution that we've implemented for our clients. For example, Matty, um, you know, hey guys, crazy day today, 14K uh, a day in meat sales alone. And also they had three private dining bookings this week alone. So private dining is a form of vertical scaling. Um, and I'll show you why we focus on that. The Snuti Meman, they had 52,000 pounds worth of direct leads uh, within seven days, it's either six or seven days for their private dining. And they closed about 14K in sales for that Bobby uh, already. Um, and Bobby Skrill, 
uh, they we did we added an extra twenty four thousand or twenty five thousand to their monthly recurring revenue with the same model in a single month's period from the first to the thirtieth. Right. So you you know this works, but the main thing is how does this process work? So what does the leverage vertical system uh, vertical scaling system flywheel affect? So how we start with vertical scaling is we need to increase a revenue channel, and the one what we're going to focus on is high ticket events. The reason for that is because with high ticket events you're able to create you're able to sell packages anywhere between 2000 to 10000 pounds a month i mean sorry 10 2000 to 10000 pounds a pop right so for example if there's 50 100 200 people that uh, you're able to get in through this private dining event you're getting 2000 to 10000 pounds per single event right so one that's a new revenue channel secondly we ensure that you get a high influx of cash up front the main problem with restaurants is that we have low margins our costs are high and so it's hard to continuously you know justify even doing certain advertising methods if we're not making profit up front whereas with this this is a profit maximization channel that makes it well with with uh, advertising costs being much lower than than um you know trying to get 200 people into your restaurant like i say remember if, if we bring you one deal that has 50 to 500 customers imagine how much effort it would take to get that many uh, customers in groups of one to three so this is a leverage system because it allows you to do one sort of advertising channel to get people 50 to 500 people into your restaurant in a group um obviously 500 restaurant i'm just saying on the maximum scale if you're specifically like a catering only business which most of you aren't even if it's 50 to 200 people that is a lot of money that you're going to generate up front uh, but more importantly it's going to be a lot more easier than trying to acquire 50 to 200 people single-handedly and if you're getting 8 to 15 per month of this that can be a huge business i mean that can be a huge channel to your business because if you're doing you know two thousand to let's just say you're selling three thousand packages and you get even like nine that's an extra twenty seven thousand pounds in that month alone right so high ticket events is a vertical scaling system that we utilize to implement for our clients once we do that it's just one single aspect that's not all we do but i'm just focusing on this for this video to, un to make you understand what this is so once we do that what the best thing about that is there's no added overheads because you use the same venue and same stuff there's no food wastage because you're able to plan this much in advance there's a high higher chance of there's a higher likelihood of success meaning that if you were to serve 100 customers in one single night we know chef chef messes up uh chef messes up an order the waiter gives the chef the wrong order um you know you you don't have stock these are all things that drop your google review and your authority in the market but with this if you know for a fact you're gonna have 100 people this is the menu this is what, what time it needs to be done every single one of those 100 customers are gonna love the food and more importantly um and more importantly with that you're going to ensure a huge chance of success because every single one of those customers is going to you know want to spread good things. that's something that's going to lead to 50 percent or more profit margin right now just think about that every single customer that comes in from the event between 50 to 500 people are going to spread positive word of mouth and bring in new business for you right so it's not just about the fact that it's much easier to acquire it's much easier to fulfill you make a a shit ton more profit you make a, a lot more revenue but also they there's this flywheel effect in which if you give them all a good service that's 50 to 100 people 100 to 500 people that are going to spread positive word of mouth and bring in new business for you okay so that's something that you need to understand because like i said this is extreme leverage one deal that brings you 50 to 500 customers imagine how much effort it would take for you to get that many customers in a group of one to three and also consider the free digital marketing you're getting from people sharing your restaurants on their social when i go to a wedding when i go to a business event um whatever it is when we host conferences for our business everyone's taking videos everyone's showing the projector things like that right these are things uh, not even projector if we don't even have a projector we're just doing a a networking event these are things that people want to put on their social media they tag your restaurant that's free content for you and that's free digital footprint for your business now once you get those now getting this is obviously the first thing um then once you get that you obviously have these increased benefits as well as increased profit margins but the main thing with that is what we do for our clients is that like i said we don't just get them high ticket events we also have a customer retention infrastructure which helps them in exponentially grow on the back end right so every customer that comes in between those 50 to 500 people we have a customer retention infrastructure in place that allows us to get more customers at uh we allows us to get more customers from there uh, from the events and things like that um, and and utilize that without without the cost of acquisition so more customers not added um, it's more customers without without the extra cost 
of acquisition, right? Because you're just all you're doing because you've already spent that money to get those 50 to 500 people, right? Or you've already done an acquisition system to get those high ticket events. And then when they've already come to you, when you've given them an amazing experience, all you need is a customer retention infrastructure that will allow them to go from a customer that spent, you know, let's just say it was an event at 20 to 35 pounds a head to 50 pounds a head. Now actually in-person people at your restaurant coming in groups of three to five, right? So there's this flywheel effect of where you start vertically to get large customers, have a customer infrastructure, customer attention infrastructure to get them into group bookings. And so overall your profit increases in general with the business and you have better unit economics because um, it means that you have a less, uh, it costs you much less to acquire a customer than your competitive uh, restaurants and so you become more attracted attractive to investors as well and this is literally all just from implementing a vertical scaling infrastructure that allows you to get high conversions and high cash up front which is uh, catering events uh, not catering events just in-house venue events from weekday corporates birthdays uh, weddings things of that sort right so like i said you get more customers without the extra cost of acquisition meaning your overall profit increases you have better unit economics that means you can generate at scale with less effort higher margins and lower costs you generate you generate scale with less effort higher margins and lower costs most restaurants only scale through increasing their costs and lowering their margins with this system by implementing a vertical scaling system you get to create uh, you get to scale with less effort higher margins and lower costs which is insane leverage right and then you utilize this newfound capital this upfront of two thousand to ten thousand pounds to then go ahead and spend money to acquire more high ticket events and you just have this flywheel that just keeps going round and round and round and round okay because the whole point is that the reason we also do this is because it self finances future acquisition deals since there's so much money and profit being made so if you enjoyed this video i hope that makes sense How, if you have any questions pop me a message below um if this is something that you'd like to learn a little bit more about learn a little bit more about what we do how we do it restaurants we've helped more restaurants that we've helped than i just showed you here then you can book a growth consultation call with our growth consultants um in the link below basically what it is is just for us to look, find a little bit more about you as well as for you to get all the assets and an understanding on what we do how we do it and for us to be able to walk through what we could possibly do for you if it seems like we might be a good fit. So definitely go ahead and do that. Uh, one thing that I would like to say is if now one of the problems that you might have is, okay, well, how do I go and uh, acquire a high ticket event worth 2000 to 10,000 pounds a pop? I've actually made a full video on this, which is the paid ads infrastructure for growth. So go ahead and I'll, I'll link it right now. So at the top, in the top right, you'll see this I button that it would have just popped out. Um, and it's basically showing you to click that button to go ahead and watch that. And actually I'm also creating a video on um, on retention infrastructures to obviously acquire retention, you need to own attention. And so I'm starting, I mean, to, for, for you to increase retention, you need to own attention so you can nurture those people. And I'm actually creating, creating this killer, uh, content piece on increasing your database to initiate, uh, that specific system as well. So make sure you subscribe, click the like button, uh, turn on your post notification, click that bell below, make sure you click that bell below so that when I post these videos, you get notifications. And uh, thank you guys so much for your feedback. I've been getting some great feedback about how much this content helps you guys. Um, if it's helped you comment down below and I'll make more content like this as well. So cheers guys, have a good one. Um, and I hope that was valuable.